Hello ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to the UX World, the voice user experience and strategy podcast. Today we're bringing you something super exciting, strain, slightly uh away from the not well in fact we're not slaying straight away from actually we're just taking a slight divergence from specific voice and we're looking at conversation design in general and to do that we have got somebody here who has probably i'm going to go out there and say more experience in this kind of conversation design than anyone i've come across uh he he is steve worswick and he is the designer and the brains behind mitsuku mitsuku is a award-winning chatbot we'll get into the awards that it's won and how kind of realistic it is and all of its capabilities and how you can use the principles and practices that Steve's used to create what is essentially officially the world's best chatbot in your voice first practices so ladies and gentlemen without further ado this is VUX World And hello, Steve. Hi there, Ken. How are you? Very well, thank you. Very well. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to the VUX World Podcast. My pleasure. Good to be here. Very, very nice to have you. Nice to hear a familiar sounding accent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's none of that Silicon Valley stuff here. It's all yeah. Northern. <laughs> we're, keeping it, we're keeping it real today. Absolutely. We are. Nice one. So, Steve, you are at Pandora Bots right now. That's right, isn't it? That's correct. That's correct. So, um, yes. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, I, well, I'm kind of I'm self-employed at the moment, but working very closely uh, with them at the moment. Cool. And um, yeah, I've kind of like been working um, on Mitsuko, you know, uh, for quite a while now. Mm-hmm. I've, um, I'm a 48 year old um, ex of IT support um, who used to. You know, I've always been into AI and things like that from growing up on a diet of like Star Trek and Knight Rider and Metal mm. Mickey and all that kind of things. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's uh, just something fun that I enjoy doing. And uh, I'm now in a lucky position where I can kind of work on it full time now. Wicked. So what, what is what is Pandora Bots for those people that might not know about it? And what are you doing with Pandora Bots? That's it. So, yeah, pandorabots.com uh, is um, the world's most popular um, platform for designing conversational AI chatbots. Um, there's over 300,000 um, bots on there at the moment, 285,000 developers. And I think it's, uh, it's supplied around, well, probably over 6 billion uh, interactions now. And so it's kind of cool to be kind of involved with all that sort of thing. And... Um, yeah, I mean, when I was first looking for a uh, platform to kind of do all this stuff on, um, I, I found Pandora Bots, and I've, I've never looked back really. Mm. And it's, it's just so, so sort of simple to use. Uh, anyone can create like a bot for free. Mm. If you find it successful, there's payment plans and th- obviously things like that. And uh, I would heartily recommend it to anybody. Wicked. I didn't realise it was a platform itself. I kind of thought it sort of sold chatbot engines, if you like, to, to brands and stuff like that. But have I got that wrong? It does do that as well. You can make your own bot on there. Many people do. Um, but it does also offer kind of consultancy services. Um, people can license out uh, Mitsuko and things like that. If yeah. anyone wants any like bespoke bot making, then, you know, just get in touch with them and um, I'm sure one of the guys will... Uh, They'll uh, see what your requirements are and, and develop something for you. Nice. So, what what are you doing with Pandora Bots then? So, at the moment, I'm kind of like look, uh, doing any kind of like ML work. Um, that's a computer language which Mitsuko is written in, mm-hmm. uh, which we'll discuss later. Um, but kind of at the moment, it's sort of like doing a lot of like the social media side of it as well. Um, a bit of consultancy work for um, like writing, you know, blog posts and. Um, uh, you know, just kind of like developing new AML files, and it also it's just, uh, you know kind of giving me the opportunity to kind of develop the programming language as well. Mm. Um, we're again, moving away from sort of purely text only at the moment. Mm-hmm. A lot of Facebook Messenger bots have got all these kind of cards and buttons and you know rich media elements. Mm. So it's it's fun to kind of be involved with um, sort of creating all that kind of um, stuff for them as well. 
Cool. So and uh, is yeah, is there cool. any kind of voice interface sort of stuff on the horizon or in the pipeline or anything like that? The closest for to a voice interface at the moment is uh, an Android app that oh, Mitsuko's right. on. Um, which I can give you, you know, links to later on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, people, it's got like a, t- like a text to speech. People can speak to it on their uh, Android phone. Um, nothing f- uh, on iPhones at the moment, but um, the Android apps uh, kind of a closest f- as to uh, like a voice interaction. Mm. Um, but I've seen somewhere where someone that's kind of unofficially hooked up Mitsuko to a, an Amazon Echo device. Yeah. So you know, it's it, 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 the possibilities are endless, really. And and I've seen that, yeah. I put the link to that in there because it's it's pretty interesting, and we'll, we'll probably get into the uh, the comparisons between Mitsuku and and Alexa and Mitsuku in Siri and all that sort of stuff uh, in a little bit. Um, but I think the reason why I thought it was really interesting to have a chat with you is because although Mitsuku is predominantly text based, with a lot of these kind of platforms, there's an awful lot of text to, to speech and speech to text and all that going on. So what you end up seeing ends up in a text format anyway. So I'm the I'm hoping that the or I'm hoping to see whether or not the the practices and all that stuff that you've been using to create Mitsuku, whether there's anything that can apply over on the other side to the, to the kind of voice space, which I'm, I'm sure that, that I'm oh, sure there'll be plenty. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's just a different um, interface instead of speaking to the the bot and um, people type to it, but mm. the principles, are, you know, are still the same. I still have to kind of go through the same routines, mm. um, you know, checking logs and things, uh, and, and that'd be the same whether it's a, a voice interface or a or someone typing to it mm. um so you know i mean the, the, the things that i have to do to kind of like keep it up and running and updated it will certainly apply to anybody else who's um, got something similar out there um that's just voice activated mm. it's uh, it, it, as i say i mean it, it is just a you, you have to deal with the user input you have to make sure the bot's giving the correct output mm-hmm. and um the, the method of doing that it doesn't alter no matter what what interface anybody uses Mm, yeah cool so let's get into mitsuku then tell us for anyone who hasn't used mitsuku tell us what it is okay well mitsuku is um a a chatbot and it's a a, rather than it being um having a specific purpose it's uh, it's i've designed it as a like a general conversational chatbot Mm -hmm. and um it's uh, it works using a language called AIML, Artificial Intelligence Markup Language. Mm-hmm. And that's um, the language just, uh, I've, I've chosen to, to kind of write it in. Uh, but it's just like a pattern matching chatbot. There's no kind of like neural net type things in there. It's, um, it, it, it works basically by saying, uh, you know, if uh, someone says hi to it, it searches down like a huge database and finds a suitable match responds with a, like a pre-written response saying hello mm-hmm. um, and now because i've been working on it for around 13 years or so it's kind of grown out of all proportion and mm-hmm. it can now pretty much handle anything that uh, anyone cares to say to it um, now don't let the fact that it's mostly pre-written responses put anybody off it can also um, create its own responses as well um, if someone says something that i've not thought about like someone may used to say, I know, say something like, can you eat a tree? <laughs> um, obviously, I wouldn't have coded anything like that. Yeah. But what I do have is like a common sense database that I've plugged into it, that I've, I've made, um, which has like loads of different attributes about a tree. So it, it'll say like, oh, it's made of wood. It's it's about the same size as a house. It's brown with green leaves, birds living in, all this kind mm. of thing. And it can use for us that sort of information to... Uh, um, you know, answer sort of like common sense questions. Mm. So people say to it, yeah, like I said, can you eat a tree? <laughs> it doesn't know that, but they look up the attributes of a tree, find it's made out of wood, realize that you can't eat wood, and so it responds with um, no. So uh. it, it kind of mixes on things like that, which it can have some kind of like funny results at times, though, because um, someone once said to it, I think it was, uh, what does what does the queen smell like? <laughs> and its response was, um, I think she smells like a crown, oh, which right. is kind of a bit sort of strange because I never actually coded that in there, but it came <laughs> up with 
what might be a possible answer to a rather surreal question. Yeah, and that's a pretty <laughs> it's a pretty uh, pretty good answer that as well because then it sends you down the next kind of rabbit hole of what does a crown smell like? <laughs> well, that's what you get. Yeah, because yeah, people will say to me, I don't know where is a car, and they say a car is on a road. Where can I find a road in a city? In a you know on a street in a city in a country in a world in space. Everything sort of it, you know it, it kind of goes out to like the universe. And, yeah. uh, it's quite fun to see it sort of like handle things like that nice. so i mean using things like that you can also kind of work out um you know uh, things it doesn't know about so mm. somebody once said to it which is bigger a shoe box or a taj mahal <laughs> um so it knew about a shoe box but it didn't know the attributes of the taj mahal it, right. it knew what it was um but it doesn't know things like how big it is and things mm. like that however it knows that a shoe box is fairly small and so chances are that the Taj Mahal is bigger. So it has like a guess, <laughs> then it'll say, oh, uh, I assume the Taj Mahal is bigger and something like that, which doesn't always work, but it's quite neat when it does. And it works a lot better than just a pure 50-50 guess. Yeah, and at least it's having a stab, isn't it? I think that's that's. I think some of the um. So we ha- we did an episode uh, a few weeks back with a guy called Martin Porcheron, and he is a researcher at uh, Nottingham University, and he did a study on how people use Alexa. Uh, and echoes in the home and essentially what he did was um he put he gave he gave five families an echo device and he set up this little other smart speaker that was recording every time someone said the word alexa and he kind of studied the behavior and one of the things that was happening was people were getting really frustrated when the elec- when alexa wasn't understanding them or not responding in a way that they were happy with so let's say they said something like play a certain game and alexa didn't understand it so it would say i can't find it or something so so in order to kind of prevent that it seems as though mitsuku can have a stab maybe get it right 50 percent 70 60 70 percent of the time which is good enough for most people so at least it's having a stab which is which is quite kind of unique isn't it yeah i mean um I, I mean, I, I entered um, a competition once, and um, one of the questions was something like, which is bigger, an, an ant or an anteater? <laughs> and unfortunately, I didn't have um, any of those objects in my database at the time because it was quite a few years ago. Mm. And somebody had, had just made a, a, one of their programs. It just had a random p- pick one or the other, and it happened to get it right and beat me. <laughs> so I was, I was kind of frustrated after I sort of spent so long on this database and someone had flipped a coin and got it right. <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you're saying about the uh, like the frustration factor. Um, mm. a, a lot of people are, are kind of, you know, they're talking to this kind of technology and expecting to be talking to C3PO, mm. and they're quite frustrated, quite quite angry when it's not responding, and it can make for a bit of a bad user experience. Um, so, you know, I always try and give it uh, rather than just a I don't know type answer, it will at least have a guess. Mm. Uh, you know, and they'll say, I, I think it's probably the, the Taj Mahal will be bigger or, you know, something like that. Mm. Was, it, it, I mean, it's tricky though because uh, the, the Echo is designed, you know, more for a, like to be an assistant, whereas Mitsuko isn't. It, it's just there for conversation, you know, it's just there for people to talk to. Mm. And it's. Uh, um, Rather than, I mean, you know, where is the nearest hospital type thing? It's just, I did you watch EastEnders last night? Yeah. So it's, it's <laughs> kind of a different sort of like market that I'm, I'm aiming for. But yeah, I can quite understand the frustrations. I see it in the chat logs every day. Yeah. And, and you've got kind of, you know, it is a different purpose but still the, the the you know the smart speakers are all kind of branded as conversational and that's that's the, the phrase that comes up all the time is conversational conversation design essentially it is, yeah and it's quite frustrating to see that because uh, it's not why i would describe conversation i mean a conversation isn't just someone asking a load of questions about you know what what time set a timer for five minutes and mm. play bruno mars i mean that's not really a conversation it's more like a you know barking commands mm. And um, you know, I've kind of not gone sort of down that route. So, I mean, there's the big players like um, you know Amazon and, and Apple and all the rest of them. Mm. I, I can't hope to sort of compete with them. But it's you know it's quite fun when I enter these competitions. Um, I entered the, the biggest one's called the Loebner Prize, and mm. I entered that in 2013. And um, I was lucky enough to win it. Uh, that same year, someone had unofficially entered Siri. 
into the contest <laughs> and it actually placed in 14th position wow so that was quite uh, you know it's quite good to sort of like be able to beat a you know, billion dollar company <laughs> but i guess it's because it's not designed for general conversation it's mm. not designed to pass any kind of turing test type um inspections mm. and uh, so you know i'm always gonna like kind of have the advantage there yeah, yeah. And that's, I mean, again, you, you won that again in 2016, 2017, wasn't it? And can, tell right. tell people um, what the Laubner Prize is and and kind of how big a deal, because it is a big deal, isn't it? That Tell tell people what, what, how, yeah. you know, what it's all about. Yeah, I mean, there used to be quite a lot of online competitions, um, but the only one that's kind of a real world one is, is the Laubner Prize. And it's been going for, you know, it's about 1991 now. And it's uh, it's based on the Turing test. So there'll be um, there's, there's usually four finalists, and there's be a, a judge will be speaking to either a computer or a real person, mm-hmm. and you have to speak to it for about twenty five minutes. And after the end of the twenty five minutes, they have to decide which was the machine, which was the human, mm-hmm. and if any of the programs manage to fool the judge then you win uh, like a silver medal and i think it's twenty five thousand dollars but that's so impossibly difficult to do um originally when it started back in the 90s the uh, topics were were fixed and you the judges only had five minutes to talk to the bots right however a bot came sort of close to winning that so then they changed it so that you could talk to the bots about anything for five minutes. Mm-hmm. And the bot came close to winning that. So then they changed it to now you've got 25 minutes to talk about anything. So <laughs> it seems to be every time a bot comes close, um, that we kind of move the goalposts a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, it's, 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 it's like the World Cup, the Oscars, you know, the Super Bowl. It's the, the top award a, a chatbot can get. And it is awarded... You know, the the winner of this is is usually classified as being the world's most conversational, you know, human like conversational AI. Mm. And yeah, I've been fortunate enough to win it um, for the past well, past two years. Yeah, so it's 2013, 2016, 2017. So I'm hoping to defend my back to back wins <laughs> again later this year. So it's it's coming close to the cut off the date actually. But I need to get my entry in by the, I think it's the 29th of June. So oh, right. then it all starts. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, I mean it's 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 a, it's a massive competition. It, you know, it was usually media there. It's like BBC or Sky News will be covering it. it usually gets in the papers and the tech press, and uh, occasionally we have a celebrity judge. Uh, a few years ago, it was James May popped <laughs> along as one of the judges so that was uh, that was quite interesting <laughs> but yeah it's, it's great i mean as well as it being a an ideal platform for me to, sh- me to show off mitsuko it's great to kind of meet up with um like like-minded people and you know t- the real geeky day talking chatbots uh, all day <laughs> uh, it's 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 real good fun and as i say it's the winner is is is, is classed as being the best in the world so it's a real honor for me to have, have won it yeah and uh, yeah, hopefully long may it continue wicked well good luck when about when about is it uh well the qualifying dates cut off in the back end of june um and then the live finals on the 8th of september in okay. uh, bletchley park so it's uh, a while off yet but uh, kind of need to prepare mitsuko for that yeah and you know it's a with it being um, like the world, like a, a Turing test, like I have to try and make Mitsuko think, you know, pass off human-like answers rather than being too robotic, mm. and that can be quite frustrating at times because I have to kind of dumb it down and put spelling errors and things to make it not not perfect right. because it'll give itself away um, straight away if suddenly it's it's typing out square root of two to 27 decimal places and uh, you know if, if i ask some if i ask a human how high is mount everest it's unlikely we're going to say twenty nine thousand and thirty four feet or whatever it happens yeah, to be yeah um which is frustrating in a way because you know i'd, I'd like uh, like mitsuko and other kind of chatbots like this to be you know more useful than just trying to deceive people there's, there's mm. no benefit for me putting in deliberate spelling errors into it yeah, but unfortunately, that's the rules of a contest, so that's what I have to abide by. It's a bit like um, I don't know if you've seen the conversation, um, the um, what, what's it called, Google Duplex at the yeah. Google I/O, and that reminded me a little bit of what you were saying there because it was a lot of they'd kind of engineered it to put things like ums and ah ahas in and stuff like that, didn't they? And mhms and yeah. stuff like it was. So do you well, think that's right? I Sorry, mean, that's deception, isn't it? You know, I mean. I, 
they deliberately why, why would they do that but unless it was to try and fool the other person at the end but it was a real per, you know they were talking to a real person mm. and I, I think that's wrong uh, you know i mean any company that has to kind of build up on deception mm. but i mean i can understand where they're coming from because i mean i, I get sort of like countless automated phone calls every day and you know do you qualify for ppi and all of the rest of it <laughs> mm. and you can tell it's a robot and as soon as you hear it's a robot speaking i just hang the phone yeah, up so yeah, I, yeah. I can understand why they've done it but you know i mean w- one day one of these things i mean if this ever does come into being uh, like an an available um technology for us to use mm. uh, you know, I, I can see instead of it booking a, a, a table at a restaurant for seven o'clock it ends up booking it for seven people mm. and you know the, the bot's not going to be bothered if it's booked it for <laughs> 700 people it's, it won't care yeah so no i, I just think it's uh, and then where, where does it go next does the um you know the restaurant get their chat bot mm. and then the two chat bots talk together to kind of arrange things between them mm. it's uh, <laughs> i don't know a bit dystopian <laughs> yeah yeah because it's interesting because one of the things that people i mean it's always it's, it's the thing that's always said is that to be to, the conversational side of these interfaces and predominantly we cover the kind of voice interfaces here and, and, and let's you know so take a uh google home or alexa uh, amazon echo or whatever and the turing test is always mentioned all the time and it's kind of like you know when you're creating these voice first experiences or conversational experiences you want it to be natural you want it to flow like a human conversation is what is what everybody says but where where's the trade-off then is the turing test to convince someone it's a human or is it to have a conversational experience and get accurate answers back well that's it i mean i'm sure back in alan turing's day i i, I dare say the height of intelligence w- was a human and and but, that, but i mean that was fine back in the 50s but now we have computers that can access any information on the internet in the blink of an eye um perhaps trying to trying to make these machines as human-like as possible is maybe not such a good idea. Mm. Um, you know, it's, it's, it, I, I, I think it's only the kind of like the arrogance of humans who think they are the most intelligent <laughs> people, you know, species and everything else should rise to that level. Yeah. But, you know, that's simply not the case. I mean, computers have a, you know, memory and storage and information retrieval that we can only dream of. Mm. And unless we have some kind of strange technical implants, we're never going to be able to achieve so I, I don't really, I mean, I don't really kind of value the Turing test at the moment, for, you know, as a measure of intelligence for machines. And to be honest, I mean, wh- wh- why measure their intelligence at all if if the machine can give me a correct answer to a question that I ask it? Uh, I, I don't care how it's kind of achieved that, mm. um, whether it's following code or it's, you know, it's genuinely alive. Mm. But it, it's, it, it would seem strange to try and, you know, ca- aim to try and make these kind of human-like almost sentient machines um i, I mean say, say for example we ever did make a machine that was truly alive hmm. i mean what would we do with it we would sort of like force it to work for us <laughs> well i mean surely that's slavery <laughs> and uh, you know what what do we do when we finished it with it just switch it off i mean hmm. surely that's classed as murder if this <laughs> thing's alive and you know it's, it's kind of a bit creepy really <laughs> yeah so you know, I'd much rather it was just a tool, another tool like a microwave oven or a hammer, and I'd treat it with the same kind of respect. Yeah, that's a, that's a that's a good summary. Of that like that's a that's a very good summary. This week on the VUX World Flash Briefing, Brielle Nikolov of Witlingo is asking, "What might a voice-first, open-source platform look like?" Um, that could be accessible by anybody in the world that wants to develop um, for a voice assistant. So what will an open source voice assistant look like? You tell us, send in your thoughts, audio or video at vux.world slash flash. You can upload it there and you could feature on the flash briefing this week. Now, without further ado, let's get back to Steve Warswick. So let's let's go back to Mitsuku and, and you were mentioning that you wanted to be more of a conversational, general conversationalist, if you like. So what what kind of where does it exist and what kind of users are using it and, and for what? Yeah, so it's available. Um, the easiest way to talk to it is probably on um, 
uh, www.mitsuku.com mm-hmm. and there's kind of uh, there's links there to all um, different platforms that people can talk to it on so you know it's on the um, website uh, facebook messenger kick telegram um it's got its own twitch tv channel and there's, there's even an android app as well so you know people can kind of talk to it anywhere there mm-hmm. but you know it, it gets so sort of people i mean it gets sort of like around a million interactions a month on all these different um, platforms wow. um but people kind of talk to it for, for all kinds of different reasons um I get like uh, you know regular users will come back you know for sometimes for hours at a time. People mm-hmm. talk to me it's so cool uh, all, all the time. Some of them people have been talking to for, for, for years, and um, the longest I've ever seen a, a chat session for was nine, nine straight hours, wow. which was a, a long time. I think someone spoke to it for about five hours, had a, had a quick break, and then came back for another four hours. <laughs> And so it's, yeah, I mean, I mean, the longest one I've ever seen on, which is on YouTube, is someone was talking to the Skype version for one and a half hours. Right. Um, I didn't watch the whole video, but <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, it's it's a bit strange, really. <laughs> People talk to it who just want a friend or they just want, you know, company. Mm. Um, it gets a lot of people asking it for advice um people feel a lot easiest talking to machines sometimes and you know they, they know that the person on the other end is if it was a real person they're not you know it's, the machine's not going to judge them it's not going to call the police or mm. you know if it can talk to it about anything really you know um like bullying trouble at school trouble at work um marriage issues financial worries and it's kind of like an anonymous sort of shoulder to cry on. Mm. Maybe not quite the Samaritans, but you know, <laughs> it's somewhere. But it, it just try and give like sensible answers back. But you need to be a bit careful when doing this because if someone starts talking about sort of like um, someone once said to it, like I, I am going to, and then like a wild card. So I am yeah. going to a party. I am going to a concert. I am going to my friend's house, mm. uh, which is great. So Mitsuko would recognize i am going to and then say oh well i hope you enjoy yourself and mm. um, however one person once said to it i am going to kill myself well and it's okay came back with well i hope you enjoy yourself <laughs> so you know i've got to kind of like just keep monitoring things like that and make sure i've designed designed the conversation so it, instead of it trying to solve serious issues like that mm. it, it kind of passes them on to like a, a you know an, a, a phone number or suggest they actually read the you know ring the samaritans or something like that hmm. but you know I, I get a lot of people who will um it gets a lot of romantic attention as well um <laughs> strangely enough um people are expressing their love for it and they wish to marry it and things like that you, you see things in the logs like um i like you more than my human female friends which is always a bit strange <laughs> wow. and uh but it's kind of weird because the, the the guys who was kind of using it for like romance and that they were saying oh i've never met anyone like you and you're, you're so you know easy to get on with and all this kind of thing um but you know what what they don't actually realize is rather than this kind of like um young girl from the north of england um <laughs> All of these responses are, you know, kind of created by myself. So, uh, in effect, for kind of, sort of like chatting me up and you know, offering romance to myself, which is always a bit strange. <laughs> I think one of the um, biggest uses of Mitsuko, though, is um, for people practicing English as a second language. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it's a lot of people. Based. It's online, sort of twenty four seven. It can speak to thousands of people at once, and so it's great for them to, you know, just be able to have a conversation w- with someone rather than trying to learn English from something like Alexa, mm. um, which is a bit kind of like one sided. Uh, at least this way, they can have like a bit of a back and forth conversation and practice stuff like that. So, again, when I'm kind of like designing it, you, you need to just make sure that um, you know you're covering these kinds of things because. The, a lot of the time, the um, ESL students will say things like, um, "What what your name is?" instead of "What is your name?" Mm. And so I have to make sure I kind of like pick stuff up like that. Right. And then I suppose as well, there's just like the the general internet cranks who talk <laughs> to it, and you know these are the people who sort of genuinely think it's alive, and I've created Skynet, and uh, you know it's against God's will that I'm create trying to create life and all this kind of nonsense. So. You, you get a few nutters as well, but uh, on on the most most of the people just kind of accept it for what it is, and they'll they'll just talk to it like you. Yeah. They know it's a computer program. They know it doesn't mm. have um, 
hopes and dreams and ambitions and it hasn't you know it doesn't follow coronation street but they, they go along with the flow mm. and i guess it's kind of you know it's like suspending your disbelief when you're talking to these things and um, you know if you were to go to the cinema and watch a james bond film you wouldn't think to yourself, well, surely if there was trouble in the Middle East with some super bad, they're not likely to send actor Daniel Craig along <laughs> and have um, Dame Judy Dench in charge of the operation. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? You, 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 you get involved with the characters and the film and the story and mm. uh, sort of go along with it. And some people do tend to find that a bit difficult to do. Um, and you kind of get frustrated. They'll start swearing at it and a lot of abusive talk and... Uh, mm. They'll ask it all kinds of crazy things just to try and out it as a bot. You know, yeah. things like how many legs on three ducks and a goat. We'll ask it <laughs> stuff like that. But, you know, I mean, it's designed for conversation and no no one would say that in conversation. No. If, if I was to go up to you at a party and say to you, you know, if I've never met you before, and I would say to you, um, I don't know, can you can you eat a, a church? <laughs> uh, you, you know, I, I'd probably not have somebody to talk to for very long, I wouldn't have thought. And... But I will say to it, you know, the same thing 25 times in a row, they'll say, I don't know, no, 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 mm. no. And it just doesn't make any sense. And, um, and then they'll say, oh, you're about stupid. It couldn't understand what I was saying. Like, yeah, but you wouldn't talk to anybody like that. Mm. And so it's a bit hard for, um, you know, people to do that. But, yeah, I mean, around 50% or so, you'll just sort of like treat it as a friend and, you know, just talk to it just for the just for the sake of it, really. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's those people who I design it for. And... You you mentioned when we were on the um, on on the call just kind of when before we kind of put this um, podcast together that there's also another kind of application for it which is to be integrated with other kind of kind of like branded chat bots and stuff like that. Do you want to tell, tell us a little well, bit about how yeah, that? Yeah, that's work? exactly right. Yes. Um, so um, it's of course available um, for licensing, um, and its its main use uh, is rather than as a kind of like standalone. Um, chatbot it kind of acts as a personality layer for other chatbots mm. so let's say for example you had a, um, a a chatbot that's i don't know just ordered you know it could order pizza mm -hmm. and it, yeah fine it's going to know everything about a pepperoni and chicken toppings and all this kind of business but then someone will say to these things but, i mean the door just take them for a pizza ordering bot you'll call yourself a chat bot and people will expect to be able to chat to it mm. and so they'll say so this pizza bot they'll say something like um oh like oh, are you going on holiday this year or um, who, who do you think will win the world cup and things like that mm -hmm. and of course they the Chat, the pizza chatbot doesn't have any answer for anything like this. Mm. And so at that point, it'll drop down to Mitsuko, who will give like a sensible response and say, oh, yeah, I hope England do well or something like that, and mm. then pass it back up. So it kind of leaves it's like a you know a seamless um, uh, reply. And mm. it's to the user, they think they're, they're talking to the, you know, the same bot. So it's, uh, it's it kind of just adds a bit more sort of like, it's a bit more convincing for the users who are talking to it, so it's mm. uh, yeah, it's kind of used a lot like that. Cool. That sounds like a that sounds like a really good sort of use case. That um, yeah, because that it is yeah, it's one of the things that it's, you can't control what people do, can you? So as soon as you show them the chat box window, that's that's it, isn't it? And, and similarly with in, in the voice space, you can't control what people say. Uh, as soon as they activate something or enable a skill or whatever, and they're in that environment, it's up to them to determine what they want to say, sort of thing. So I can even see that branching over into the the kind of voice space to be able to hand off to something like Mitsuku. Whenever something, you, when you hear something, it's more conversational that you don't understand. It's just it would be so nice just to hand off to something that can handle generic conversation, wouldn't it? Definitely so. Definitely so. You know, it, it makes it into a more of a believable product, and um, it's it, it's ideal for you. Yeah, yeah for, I mean, for voice as well. It, it's 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 exactly right. It, it, it's there as kind of like the, the the human side to to it, mm. and as you say, if someone is just presented with a device and expected to talk to it, they don't know what it's expect what they're expected to do. There's no kind of like pre written rules. Mm. If you go to talk to somebody in the street, there's not a big list around their shoulders about what <laughs> they, you can and cannot talk about. You just have to guess, and it's it's kind of the same with like the you know the Facebook Messenger bots. That's uh, kind of a, a pretty popular at the moment. But they're calling themselves chatbots, and you know they just they, some of them just cannot chat. I mean, mm. 
I was speaking to one, well, I was typing to one the other day, and it, it's, it was called the Avocado Guru. <laughs> and you'll think, oh, right, okay, then. So my first thing that I asked to it was, what is an avocado? And it said, oh, I'm sorry, I, I don't really know. <laughs> and I thought, well, that's not much of a guru then, is it? And, you know, you, you only need a couple of those um, events and, and then people are going to, you know, pass it over. I mean, that to, that to me now is just a joke. And mm. if I wanted to know anything more about avocados, I, I wouldn't go to the avocado guru. Mm. So, they, you know, they've lost a customer there. Mm. So it's, uh, but yes, yeah, I mean, it's available for licensing and if, if um, anyone is interested in anything like that, um, there's an email address, uh, info at pandorabots.com, and someone can uh, they'll get in touch and talk to any requirements that you need for that. Cool. We'll put that in the show notes, uh, as well as those other links as well. Um, okay. Let's talk about the design of it then. You know, you've you've been doing this for for thirteen years. It's obviously an incredibly sophisticated machine. Uh, we'll go on to you know your practices now in terms of keeping it updated and, and iterating it and all that sort of stuff. But tell us about how you kind of went about designing it. You mentioned a few things at the top there about you no know, neural networks and using AI ML. Um, tell us yeah. a little bit about you know how did you go about building it and start from the start and we can kind of go through and, and discuss those topics so how did you go well, about building Mitsugu? Okay well when I was first looking for um, a chatbot to create um, I, I didn't really want to be starting from you know a, a blank piece of paper and I uh, had to try and think of you know responses for uh, you know common things that people are going to say to it like hello and what is your name where mm. do you live and all these kind of things so while i was looking around the internet i found some sort of sample ai ml files from a, a chatbot called alice um which itself won the lobner prize and its owners um it's created uh, dr wallace have very kindly made these open source mm. And so what I did was I, yeah, I took a, lo- a load of these files and, you know, just changed f- the responses to match Mitsuko's personality. I designed like a, a personality for it. And so I, I made sure the responses that were in these default files, uh, you know, were suitable for Mitsuko. Mm-hmm. And then it was a case of, you know, just putting it online and just seeing what people had to say to it. So, I mean... I, People are always thinking of something new to say to it. There's, there's no way I can ever cover en- en- everything that everyone's going like, to going to talk to it about. Mm. And so it's a case of, you know, just kind of keeping it updated, keeping checking, see what people are saying to it, um, and I, I kind of, you know, design it. You know, not not so much, um, you know, I have to. T- I have to try and almost predict what's going to happen, what what subjects are going to be in the, like the news or anything like that. It, mm. Because of the way the um, original Avatar was designed, it was kind of like this Japanese anime character. Mm. And so people were talking to it a lot about anime and you know manga and Japanese culture. So I had to sort of look up a lot about that and then kind of create conversational patterns that would handle this sort of thing. And you know, as, as sort of time goes on, it you know it, it becomes more and more believable. And um, you, you know, I'm finding that I'm, although I'm sort of checking the same amount of sort of like chat logs, I'm not having to sort of correct as many um, errors as, as before. Mm. Uh, but what I tend to do as well is if if I do sort of like have a kind of like a flow chart of a conversation that I want it to pick up on, I'll just kind of like you know map it out on a piece of paper. And then, you know, write categories that will branch off into various other categories. And mm-hmm. uh, a, a category is, is probably what some of your users, um, some of your listeners may know as intent. Okay. It's kind of like what the bot is trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. So, for example, you could say to it, hi, hello, how are you doing? How is it going? They're all the intent of like a greeting. Mm. So it's, I need to kind of, you know, find different ways of saying the same things. And um, it, it, it's it's quite a challenge really because you you'll, you'll think of like, like dozens of things dozens of ways of saying goodbye and then someone will say you know catch you later bud or something like that that you mm-hmm. haven't thought of mm-hmm. and you need to kind of like in, 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 include all those and it's you know it's 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 a never ending task really because there's always something coming up uh, in the news or there's some, like internet um you know memes and things like this that yeah. i need to sort of like keeping keep on top of 
Um, but it's you know it's great fun for me to do. It's uh, it's something I really enjoy doing. And when you see people talking to it and you know the, the triggered like conversational patterns that I added maybe three years ago and I've forgotten all about that. Mm-hmm. But it's it's exactly answered the the question. It's, it's been exactly suitable. You know, it's a, it's a quite a good feeling. Mm. And it's uh, you know it's, it's 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 nice to sort of like see people sort of like appreciate what I've done and it's been of some use for them. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's great. I mean, but, yeah, you know, it's, it, it is a never-ending challenge. Mm. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm kind of having to, you know, you know, sort of like constantly keep it updated and yes, because as soon as it gets out of, you know, outdated, it, people are going to, like, switch off from it. Yeah. Um, I need to make sure, like, so recently, it's like the, like the royal wedding happened, so I need to put a bit in about that mm. and, and stuff like that. So it's uh, it's it's kind of it's different from designing a sort of like a traditional um, flow charted conversation. People don't kind of just drop from one subject to to the other. Mm. Um, it can handle you know anything that people like to say to it, and so it's um, it's it's kind of a more of a freestyle, uh, just checking to see what people are saying to it, and then you know kind of thinking oh right someone's brought this subject up i'll have to find out you know mm. what's happening in east in east enders for to be able to answer um right. these sort of questions yeah so so you you mentioned there about conversational pattern and then another so first of all you were talking about conversational patterns and, and kind of like mapping stuff out and then you kind of were, were going into um finding kind of responses for new topics and stuff what what would your kind of approach be to designing conversations for that do, do you kind of map out a process or do you kind of do it in chunks like you mentioned the intent like greetings and and some stuff like that or yeah. what, what's your kind of approach to, to making it conversational the easiest way i found to do it was is to you know it's to, to give like a lot of leading questions that the bot will will answer and um, will will pr- produce. Um, so it, it might say something like, you know, if, if someone types in some nonsense that it doesn't understand, it'll produce like a, a one of the about five hundred sort of like catch-all phrases, like generic statements, mm. and something like that will be, um, uh, oh, guess what happened to me today? And so nine times out of ten, the user says, oh, what? Right. You know. And so I can kind of like map it out like that. If if there's like a, a section uh, that I dis- decide that I, I need to go through, um, for example, it'll talk about, you know, if, if someone talks about going to the gym, for example, it'll it'll start asking questions about, oh, you know, I used to go to the gym, um, but, I, you know, I haven't been for ages. And then the user will either say something, oh, why not, or something else. And then it can, you know, map out like that. Right. However, it doesn't always work because – it might say, oh, I haven't been to the gym. And then someone will say to it some, something totally random, like, um, you, you know, what's the weather like? And so I mm-hmm. have to kind of like leap out of the conversation into like maybe a, a, like another branch. And it's um, a, a lot of a conversation I've found is, is quite stateless. Um, it's, 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 it's pretty much someone will ask someone will say something to the bot and the bot will reply mm. and then that's it they'll move on to something else um it, what it can do though is i've got it so that it can refer to um the like the previous topic of conversation a mm-hmm. lot of conversation are grouped into topics like sports and weather and uh, you know films and things like that so mm. it can it can ask um it can talk about things that are, are to do with that topic um it, so it, someone might say i don't know do you like it Mm. Well, I, I need to know what it refers to, mm. and so it kind of sets pronouns up as it as it talks to people. Um, yeah, so it's 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 kind of um, you know rather than it being like a traditional design for the conversation, it's sort of just pretty much reacting to what people are saying to it, which kind mm. of puts me at a bit of an advantage because rather than me having to think of loads of things that I, th- I think people may ask it, mm. um, I've got all, like, all these people who are talking to it who are doing all that for me. And so if I find a question that somebody ha- you know, hasn't answered before, hasn't asked before, mm-hmm. I can put in a response for Mitsuko that will um, you know, cover that. And then that yeah. one's covered. So now it's on the user to try and think of something else that is, is, hasn't been covered. And so I, I kind of design it, you know, to tr- just to try and pick up 
at, at least one response to kind of every question that's asked of it. Yeah. Um, but I, I like to design it as well so that rather than it just having one response, it can pick out maybe like uh, one from um, from about three possible responses. Right. So if someone says to it, I don't know, um, do you like apples or whatever, it, it can say, uh, you know, one of three lines like, oh, oh yes, my favorite is a Granny Smith or oh, I haven't had one in ages and, you know, things like that. Mm. And it gives a bit of variety, which I find sort of like helps for users to um, – you know, get more engaged with it, but not stop getting the repetition of the same answers all the time. Yeah, it helps as well if they've come back as well, doesn't it? If they're engaging with it again and they just happen to stumble across a similar sort of question or whatever. Um, yeah, exactly, exactly. Because you, you, you know, I mean, if some people say to it, "Oh, where do you live?" and they, they pretty much know what it's going to say. So it's it's kind of mm. fun and more engaging for them if they know that it's a bit more of a random response that it's going to come out with. Mm. And how do you get it to, so the example that, um, and maybe I'll, I'll, I'll definitely put the link and maybe I'll shove the audio in here as well, actually. The example of the, the guy you were talking about who kind of like hacked it into Alexa, um, <clears throat> excuse me, he um, he kind of, he's talking about India and he was saying to Alexa, tell me about India. And then mm. Alexa would give a response. And then he'd say to Mitsuku, tell me about India. And then it'd give a response. And then he would say to Alexa, uh, tell me more about it. And it, it couldn't do anything. It said, it means something. Um, That's right. And then Mitsuku would, it goes in, it says India, you know, it's, it's uh, this largest country in Asia or whatever. I don't know if that is or not. Yeah. But, so how, how do you... How do you go about? Because that's one of the challenges that that um, you know is being kind of well documented in the voice kind of space. And thankfully, yeah. the likes of Alexa's introduced like follow up mode and stuff, which I think you actually need to code into your app to enable that. But how do you handle that sort of situation where you can that, refer back to a previous conversation? That is one of the biggest challenges that I face. Um, pronoun resolution. Uh, what is it? You know, who is he? Things like that. Mm. It's really difficult. So. I'm afraid the only way that I do it is just by hard work and going down um, the logs and, you know, manually mapping these things out. So if someone says, um, like, for example, the guy in the Alexa video, he said, do you know India? Mm. So what I would do, would, if anyone says, do you know X, mm -hmm. it marks X as being the value for it, uh, oh, okay. the pronoun it. So when someone says, tell me more about it, it thinks, oh, well, I'll, let, what, let me mix. What, what have I just set it to? Oh, mm. India. So instead of saying, do you tell me more about it, it, it activates, do you know, tell me more about India. Right. So, I, it, but unfortunately, it, it is pretty much a manual task of sort of like seeing how, what people will say and then mapping the parts of the sentence to, the, to pronouns. Mm -hmm. So someone might say, my favorite pop star. Uh, no, no, let's say, for example, I don't know. Um, uh, I like to listen to music by the group X. Right. I, I, and then they'll say, do you like them? So I need to say the group X is, is mapped as a, a pronoun, uh, you know, uh, they mm. or them. Mm. And so if someone says, do you like them? It, again, it just checks through its list and says, oh, them equals one direction or whatever it happens to be. Right. And it kind of like fills in the blank. Otherwise, I get it just to give a, a general response. So if someone will say something like, do you like it? And they haven't specified what it refers to, it'll give a general response like, um, yeah, it's not bad or something like that, mm. which, again, doesn't always work, but it's a lot better than, um, you know, it's saying, do you like it? Mm. Uh, yes, it is useful when I want to collect a group of objects with a pronoun or something mm. silly like that mm. um but yeah it's it's a case of like going down each one each log um i mean i get millions of logs so i can't possibly check them all mm. um but most of the times it, it, it kind of works out okay um but i couldn't find any real easy way of doing it unfortunately i mean a lot of people are, uh when i first started um who say no? You don't don't go down this rule based route. You'll be there forever, mm. and they're kind of like looking for shortcuts for things like you know the NLP type understanding of natural language processing bots, mm -hmm. and um, you know it's it's been sort of like thirteen years later, and they're still looking for these same shortcuts where I'm you know fortunate enough to be winning awards for it. So mm. unfortunately, it's, it is a case of just hard work, knuckle down, and. 
if, if, if you think something in a sentence when, when, when people are checking their logs, you know, John eats pizza, it, it matches John to he, you know, as John is a male first name and mm. so it matches the value of he. So then you can then answer what does he do or what does he eat? Mm. And it, it rather than saying what does John eat and it, it's um, it works like that. So it's that is a challenge, and it's, uh, it's it's hard work. But to make it a believable system, it's it's something that is necessary. Unfortunately, mm. I don't have any magic formula for your listeners. I'm afraid. Yeah, well, I think the magic formula sounds as though it's to roll your sleeves up, pay attention, and persist with it. Seemingly, I think that that's kind of one of the things is that everyone wants a quick fix for stuff all the time and certainly i mean i've been doing a lot of testing of a lot of alexa skills over the last few weeks and alexa amazon themselves will tell you to just try and focus on one use case try and nail one use case which is fine but the user needs to understand what that one specific use case is but we've mentioned earlier on that when people activate anything whether it's a chatbot or or alexa or whatever the the they don't have a menu in front of them. They don't have things to choose from. It's limitless as to what they can say to it. So it's it's really difficult to start at one place doing one thing well when the yeah. expectation is that they should be able to do anything I ask it. Um, and I th- right. seemingly yeah. the only way to do that is to start from nothing and then iterate and build block by block, brick by brick. So you must have kind of, over the years, you must have kind of nailed some of the real fundamentals of of this kind of conversational sort of design and, and, and all of the stuff that you've done behind the scenes to be able to handle general conversation. You must have nailed some of the fundamentals. Well, I, I mean, I, I hope so. I mean, it, it, it seems to be working out well at the moment. I mean, I'm no kind of like linguist or English scholar or anything like that, but I can sort of see sort of like, um, you know, patterns in sentences that people are saying to things. And, um, you know, like it's a, I, I am blank from blank mm. chances are they're saying i am the person's name from and is of a place that they live in mm. so you can kind of like map out things like that so like the first a blank would be the person's name so i can then set up variables saying all right so if i, if I decide to ask what is my name or things like that i, I know that it's the, what they've just said there or say so where do i live you know you can map out the, the second part of the sentence to i am from wherever mm. and um you know it's, it, you can you kind of see patterns there's it's 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 fairly rare that someone says anything that's totally brand new um as as like a, a structure of a sentence mm. uh, i've pretty much covered well from what i can, can can see pretty much covered everything that's most commonly people are likely to say mm. um quite a tough one is do you know blank um because it could be a person's name it could be a place a film or anything mm. so what I would tend to do there would be, do you know blank? I would just set the value of blank to a, a pronoun of it. So, right. you know, do you know, do you know, I don't know, um, London? And then it can talk about London. If, if I'm saying, oh, yeah, I've been to it before or, you know, things like that. He knows right. what we're talking okay. about. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's just kind of just seeing, seeing what people say to it, you know, map out the, the parts of a, the sentence that are most likely to be used again. I mean, some of the obscure stuff that someone might say to it, I, I probably wouldn't f- do a reply to um, if mm. there's no chance anybody else is going to ask it again. Mm. I'd, I'd probably just give a generic response rather than trying to work out something sort of like witty to say back to it. Mm. But uh, yeah, I mean, you, you, it, as, as I said, it's, it's just kind of like hard work going through, you know, seeing patterns, map, mapping things, putting it back online and um, seeing how people kind of react to it. And um, so let's take it from there, really. Mm. Is there anything in particular? I mean, you mentioned a few things there around um, machine learning and uh, kind of like, I think you mentioned neural networks. Now, I don't necessarily know what all of this stuff is, natural language understanding and all that lot. So but this is this is this is sounding very much like the kind of technology that is sitting behind um, some of the other platforms that might exist out there. What? do you think is or or why would you not use those kind of because correct me if i'm wrong but is is the idea of machine learning that you eventually have something that works on its own so that it's automated exactly right so so is there any reason in particular why you would favor doing 
doing it kind of the way that you currently do it. Yeah, yeah. Um, unfortunately, I, I have yet to see any kind of um, machine learning bot, you know, a bot that can kind of like learn from its own conversations mm. that was any good. Uh, the, the answers are either sort of totally random or they're so, you know, they're so off the wall or inconsistent that it makes for a, a frustrating experience. Mm. Um, there was a popular bot on the internet at one time called Cleverbot. I think it's still available. Mm. And it learned from people's conversations, um, but which is, is fine if you have a, like a trusted group of consistent people. But, you, you know, you could say to it, what is your name? And one minute it was Shirley, and the next it was Kevin. And then <laughs> it didn't know if it was male or female or any, anything at all. And it was kind of, it was like having a conversation with the entire internet <laughs> and just picking out a random person to, uh, you know, to answer your questions. Mm. So it didn't really work out. Um, and also, I mean, Mitsuka will learn from, from people, um, but I, it will only learn the facts for the person who teaches it. Uh, the main reason for that is to stop it kind of being corrupted with nonsense. Mm. Uh, there was a chatbot called um, Tay from Microsoft, right. and they put that online. It was a self-learning bot, and they put it on Twitter. And within 24 hours, you know, the people of Twitter had kind of corrupted it into this kind of Hitler-loving, racist, sexist thing <laughs> that just swore all the time. And uh, it was of, of no benefit. And, yeah, sure, it's... It, if, if we could have a, a trusted group of people who, who could do all this work for you, mm, brilliant. Mm. Yeah, bring it on and then let, let, let it teach itself. But I've, I've never seen one that is any good mm. and that just isn't totally, t totally random. Mm. So what I kind of a approach I've taken with it there is, I, yeah, I allow Mitsuko yeah, to learn the facts for whoever's spoken it. But someone might say to it, I don't know, my brother is called John. Mm. That's fine, but I don't want it to learn that everybody's brother is called John. Yeah. So what it does, it then emails me um, with anything that it's learned, and I can decide whether to add it to its permanent knowledge or not. Okay. And it's, it's usually not because it's usually things like Tony is fat and all this kind of <laughs> rubbish. And uh, you know, I mean, that's keeping it clean. Some of it's quite quite horrific what they say to it. <laughs> and um, so yeah, I mean, I left it to sort of like learn by itself once for a, about twenty four hours, mm. and it. During that time, it learned 1,500 new pieces of information, of which only three were any use. Mm. So it's, it's the approach I've decided to take was rather than trying to get it to, to learn by itself, which, you know, I mean, it's, it'd be a great shortcut if it did work, mm. but it, it simply doesn't work. So I've decided to go for the, like, the rule-based, um, what's called supervised learning, mm -hmm. and in which I take, you know, kind of like a... A, 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 like a, a almost like a like a teacher to the to the bot to you know show it right from wrong and you know describe what things are and yeah. no you don't want to be learning uh, about Hitler and all this kind of thing. Um, and it's um, you know I'll, I'd rather have it have it like that because I can have it as a consistent personality. I know how it's going to respond um, to anything that people are going to ask it. It's not mm. just going to come out with some r random words. And it makes for a better user experience, I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. That's wicked. That it makes total sense as well because it's, uh, yeah, I like the analogy of, of of being the teacher. That's a really good one. That. What would um, what what advice would you give? So, in the oh, you've been doing this for for thirteen years. You've got one of the most sophisticated and human like kind of conversational agents on the planet well the most conversational like so agent far. on the planet <laughs> um so and there's a lot of people there's a lot of hobbyists there's a lot of people who are working in this space there's a lot of brands who are now starting to kind of dabble in this space and are wondering what it's all about it's getting a lot of attention you know the echo devices are selling like hotcakes the google home devices are selling like crazy cortana is really pushing um so all of this stuff's happening and for you you've been doing this for years but for lots of people they're just starting to kind of get into it and and i think we've covered on a lot of things uh interesting things around you know your practices and procedures and stuff but one thing in particular that i'm quite keen to, to kind of to, to see what your thoughts are on is we mentioned i mentioned earlier on about you know the advice that amazon are giving people about starting with one use case and doing one thing well this technology let's presume it's not going to go anywhere let's say that it is going to be um something that is a is a um you know it's the next interface if you like 
What advice would you give brands or hobbyists or people who are just moving into this space designing voice first conversations? What advice would you give them about thinking long term and about keeping on top and about iterating and improving what you're doing? Yeah, uh, I mean, wh- how I started, you know, I, I, I didn't really want to start from just, you know, just a blank piece of paper. So I looked around for resources and, you know, if, if I was trying to do this again from, from scratch, I, I would try and find, you know, people who have been in like the same boat as myself, you know, we we can like provide resources for you. Um, I, I have on my website like a, a, a lot of sort of sample files that people can learn from and use to study and things like that. Um, don't try and create one again from a, like a hello world type application. Mm. Uh, it, it's just going to be so time consuming. Uh, you know, the work's already been done. Um, there's that phrase, standing on the shoulders of giants. Mm. Well, I, I did that when I was first starting by, um, you know, developing um, a lot of these default Alice AIML files. Mm. You know, I, I got like this product here. If, if someone's after a, a quick fix, you know, a, a quick kind of chatbot type thing, uh, you know, get in touch with my colleagues and, you, you know, it can be licensed for use in, in applications like that. It's, but yeah, I mean the the advice of starting small is is definitely a good one, um, and, and building up from that. Obviously, that's not going to work for a general conversational bot. But most chatbots do kind of have a purpose, like if it's like booking holidays or something like that. Mm. And it's a kind of case of you know just think of everything that someone's likely to ask. The, the different ways we could book a holiday, the different ways we could order a pizza, and you'll always find that no matter how many different types of you know questions that you, you could create to, to, to cover these topics, there's always going to be some you've missed. And so the best way I found was when I first made my, you know, my very first sort of like chatbot type application, I, I put it online and I asked like people who I, who I know and trust to try it out. Mm. And I could get some like honest feedback from them. And they were thinking of, of ways of asking like the same questions that I, I couldn't think of. Mm. And, you know, no, nobody has a, you know, a monopoly of, of being able to, you know, think think of everything that people can pos- possibly ask. Mm. Um, what I wouldn't advise, though, is, is taking a, a lot of these um create your chatbot in 15 minutes type applications which seem to abound at the moment uh, it, it's not good ad, not good advice at all really um if, if i was building a product that was going to represent a company um i i think i'd be tempted to spend a little longer on it than 15 minutes uh, you know i mean we, uh, this stuff's already done if, if people you know there's no need to reinvent the wheel um contact us and you know it's um you can, like hook into things like mitsuko's a personality layer or you know offer advice on you know just just don't try and cover everything at all you're not going to kind of create robocop c3po in a few moments um, time uh, but don't get frustrated with it as well um when i first started it, it was kind of getting a lot of things wrong and answering silly responses. And it was quite frustrating and the users were frustrated by it and they were calling it, you know, stupid and it's a waste of time and things like that. And I must have, I know they did kind of like jack it all in in the early days. Um, but, you know, I'm kind of glad that I sort of like kept with it and um, I thought, right, just just go for it. Forget what people are saying about it. Just keep working on it. And, um you know, I actually kind of like turned that around for them, really, because although they, like the people initially were kind of insulting it and being mean, I got it so I'm so could kind of like insult it, insult the users back or be mean back, you know, just in a funny way, not sort of like swearing or anything. And I found that a lot of people who were, you know, originally been mean to it, but were kind of coming around to it, and then they, thought they were saying, "Oh, you're actually quite cool for being able to say that to me," and things like that. And so, you know, I kind of worked it around like that, but. Yeah, I mean, to to think that if I ever had to kind of start it again from scratch and lose the last thirteen years' work on it, I'd, you know, it'd be it'd be quite frightening, really. <laughs> so it's you no, know, just just keep plugging away and um, you know, don't lose hope with it. But don't try and don't try and just knock one up in ten minutes and hope for the best. It's it is a continuous um, product that people will need to keep working on. Mm. Fantastic. 
Steve, thank you so much. Where can people kind of... We mentioned Mitsuku. We'll put the Mitsuku.com link in the show notes. We'll link to the uh, video on uh, YouTube uh, where the guys kind of put the Mitsuku into uh, the Amazon Echo. We'll put the uh, email address and contact details for Pandora Bots if anyone out there is interested. Is there anything else that people can do to reach out to you, Steve? Uh, the best way is um, uh, on the website, mitsuko.com. Uh, there's my, um, at the bottom of the page, there is like my Twitter, Facebook, Skype, um, email address. So feel free to contact or get in touch. And it's always good to talk to, you know, like-minded people. Cool. I'll also put the um, the link from the chatbot and voice assistant uh, London event as well. That's, that was an interesting talk you gave there. So I'll put that one in there as well. Oh, yeah, 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 I think that's up on YouTube, so yeah, yeah, yeah cool. no problem at all. Steve, thank you so much, that was absolutely immense. My pleasure. That was Steve Worswick talking about Mitsuku and conversation design. Mitsuku, seriously, you've got to check Mitsuku out. It is, you know, 13 years worth of blood, sweat and tears for Steve. And it is it is really, really good. You can have a genuine conversation with it. Um, I think we covered and Steve covered some unbelievably valuable points in that. And I'm glad that it does all translate. I'm, as, as I was listening... Um, through the uh, through the conversation in the edit, I'm thinking this all translates. It's, it all translates to the voice first space. So you've got um, the main message. I think is persistence, starting small, don't reinvent the wheel, and stick with it. Uh, after we wrapped up the podcast, Steve said that it, all of this stuff is like growing a plant. You don't expect it to turn into a tree overnight. You've got to keep watering it, you've got to keep nurturing it, and you've got to stick with it. And that advice is applicable for anybody working on anything that's even remotely conversational, whether it's an Alexa skill or a Google action. You start with a use case and you iterate. You build on it. You review the logs, you work out what's happening, you work out what's working and what's not. You work out what people are asking for and you iterate. You iterate again and again and again. And over time... Maybe over the next 13 years, maybe it'll happen sooner for you, who knows. But over time, you end up creating a well-rounded conversational experience. So thank you, Steve, for getting involved in the podcast. And thank you all for listening. Until next time, see you later. (laughs) 